You won't need to come in here often, but you may need to retrieve amnestics or other substances to transport to other locations, so your keycard will give you access to this room. Wow. Is this where you make the amnestics? I don't personally, but yes. That sealed room over there is where they're produced. It takes weeks to retrieve the materials necessary, and the process is very delicate, so it's closed off from the rest of the lab. What kind of materials go in there? Where do you get them from? Most of that is classified. As I've said already, asking a lot of questions isn't a productive use of your time in the Foundation. And it would do- Do me well to stick to my job description. I know. It's just so exciting. It's so cool that you get to work with weird objects and creatures. I've been obsessed with paranormal things since I was a kid. Yes, you've said so twice already, Gustav. This job can be dangerous no matter how low-ranking you are. We expose ourselves to the most hazardous phenomena in the world so that everyone else can be blissfully ignorant of them. You've entered our world now, and chances are you won't get to go back to the old one. I would never want to. This is where I want to be. I'm telling you, Dr. Buck. I'll be so loyal, and... Oh, Dr. Bright. It's good to see you on your feet again. I don't know what you're talking about, Amelia. As far as I'm aware, I was never off them. Who's this kid? This is Gustav. He is a new research assistant in training. I see. Well, he looks pale and unimportant. He'll fit in just fine. Don't worry about him or his comments. He's got reasons for being so bitter. Not excuses, exactly, but reasons. Was that Dr. Bright? You know about Dr. Bright? Of course. He's wearing that amulet. How do you know about that? You haven't been here long enough to- There's this internet forum I go on sometimes. He posts stuff occasionally, and people are really big fans of his. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he's revealed no confidential information, but I may have to speak to him about participating in online forums that discuss SCPs. So, is it true? Is he, like, in the amulet? <sighs> you can't go talking about this stuff to people outside the Foundation. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, I got the big orientation full of threats already. Then, yes. I can tell you that his consciousness is trapped in SCP-963. And is it true his dad is on the O5 Council? He isn't anymore, but how do you know so much? I'm eager to learn. I'm starting to doubt whether you were a good hire. Seriously, you have to keep your questions to yourself around here. Or you're going to attract the wrong kind of attention. I've known more than a few good researchers who have been done in by their curiosity. Okay, just, just this once. Would you please tell me about Dr. Bright? You said if I had any questions, I should ask you. Fine. Jack Bright has been tested perhaps more than anyone at the Foundation today. He lost his life and most of his family because of incidents related to SCPs. What? Like stuff was done on purpose? Did they experiment with him and his family? No, not exactly. I've never spoken to him about it personally, but it's fairly well known what happened to him. He was killed in a containment breach while he was transporting SCP-963 by hand. Somehow, during or after his death, his consciousness was kept in the amulet. A few days later, when a maintenance crew was cleaning the rubble, a worker picked up the amulet, and Dr. Bright's consciousness was effectively transferred into his body. Whoa. So is he still in the amulet, or is he in the maintenance worker? It's kind of complicated, but he's in the amulet, and he has to switch bodies every 30 days. Otherwise, that body will retain a copy of his consciousness, and whenever the amulet gets given to someone new, there would be two Dr. Brights. We've instated several measures to ensure that doesn't happen. He hates it, though. He's been trying to separate his consciousness from the amulet for a long time. That is seriously freaky. I guess that could happen to anyone. 
As long as you're in a building with SCPs, you're at risk. Exactly. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Look, you seem nice, but you can't approach this job with that uh, fanboy kind of energy. You won't get anyone's respect that way. In fact, you might make people think you're not taking it seriously and you could be reported, or worse. Yeah. I mean, yes, ma'am. I understand. But I have a few more questions, if that's all right. You might as well get it all out. That sounded like an honest accident. If I was him, I wouldn't be bitter about it. What else happened to Dr. Bright? I believe his frustration is more related to his family. The most outrageous thing, in my opinion, is what happened to his brother. And if you really want to know Jack Bright, that is the story that'll tell you the most about his character and values. I mean, he has some bad days, sure. But overall, I would say that he's one of the most dedicated, enthusiastic, and brilliant researchers in the Foundation. Wow, I absolutely believe you. I mean, based on the little bit that I know about him. So what happened to his brother? He's an SCP, too. I'm not sure if he was just born like that or if something happened to him, but he has the ability to heal other people's injuries just by touching them. That's incredible. He must be valuable around here. He is. But every time he heals someone, he takes on their ailment himself. So if he touches someone with cancer, he grows tumors on his body. Oh, well, that sucks. Does he still do it? Yes, he's forced to. The Foundation doesn't have many resources that are able to do what he can. So he's basically enslaved by the Foundation. That's messed up. How old is he? Age is a complicated thing with SCP-590 because he doesn't appear to age normally, and he hasn't got the mental capacity you would expect him to. Why not? Is it a side effect of his healing ability or something? Not quite. See, Dr. Bright was put in a difficult position when he discovered the Foundation was going to imprison his brother and use him to heal their agents, putting him through involuntary pain. 590 was bedridden and put on life support because of all the ailments he had accumulated at that point. Protocols say that he is to be kept in his SCP living space at all times. He's not allowed to leave for any reason, and the only entertainment he has is kids' television shows. His food is very restricted, too. He doesn't even have a name. Everyone is required to call him 590. Shit. That sucks. So did Dr. Bright try to break him out? No, he couldn't betray the Foundation. Instead, he thought outside the box and used his brother's ability to his advantage. See, his healing ability works on mental illnesses, too. So Dr. Bright submitted an order for him to heal several cases of mental illness until his mental capacity was so reduced that he didn't realize he was in any pain. Wow, that's incredible. I see why you would call him a genius. But that's kind of surprising. He seemed so callous just now. I wouldn't expect him to be so sympathetic to an SCP, even if it was his brother. He's a complex man, Gustav. You're right, he can be callous, reckless, and sometimes it seems he doesn't value human life. That's definitely what he's known for, at least. But he also has a decent capacity for empathy. Of course, you're right. Maybe one day I'll get to know him and I'll understand him better. Is that all? Him and his brother were victimized by the Foundation? Careful with your wording. Nobody was victimized by anyone. God, for someone who seems to know so much, you sure act carelessly. But no, there's actually more, a lot more. Like what? Okay, this is the last thing I'll tell you about Dr. Bright. I don't have time to sit around gossiping all day, so here it is. When Jack was very young, his father was a junior researcher and his mother was a medical assistant. His mother gave birth to a stillborn baby girl, and his father refused to give up on the baby. He used any SCPs he had access to to try to bring the baby back to life, including his own son, 590. And it worked. The girl lived. But she was taken into custody by the Foundation for observation. Eventually, she was assigned an SCP designation. They quickly realized that she had recuperative abilities. 
She could heal at five times the speed of a normal person. And she also never stopped growing. Though the growth of her intelligence stagnated quite early, she's about ten feet tall now, if I recall correctly. Her size has presented all kinds of health issues, and to the Foundation's credit, they have done their best to keep her alive. She's got an artificial heart because her natural one was failing to pump blood to all her extremities, and she has extensive braces to make up for weaknesses in bone structure and muscle mass. She's even given physical therapy to try to keep her body in a relatively healthy condition. Her father, Dr. Bright's father, wasn't happy with it, though. Over the course of his career, he put in many requests to have her SCP designation removed and allow her to return home. They were all denied. Even when he was in 05, the rest of the council wouldn't yield. They said she was never truly his daughter, and threatened to remove him from his seat if he made another request. Oh, so he was an 05. Yes, he was 0512, and the first 05 ever to retire and live a normal life once his career as the Foundation was over. I thought you're in for life once you join. <laughs> well, Gustav, if you rise through the ranks and become an 05, maybe the rules will be slightly different for you. But we all make sacrifices. I would argue that the Bright family is among those who've made the most. Yeah, no kidding. They didn't know about any of this on the forum. I wonder what they would say. Not that I would. I mean, I know I can't tell anyone. Right. I'm sure I've made that point clear. But as far as your curiosity goes, I've had similar thoughts. His father, Adam Bright, decided to have a family despite the risks of hurting or losing them. He and his wife are just fine, I assume, but they're among the lucky few. And all three of his children are SCPs now, and they've all suffered for it. I could never have a family knowing that I might bring that upon them. Telling these stories to Foundation employees gives them a chance to consider that before they endanger themselves and the people around them. That's true. But I think what happened to the Brights might be good in a way. It's brave of him. To have the courage to love. I mean, just look at this place. Barren walls, fluorescent lights, windows separating people. It's easy to get lost in all the bleakness. I know I've annoyed you with my over-enthusiasm, and I respect your advice as someone who's clearly successful in the Foundation, but maybe you should consider what I have to gain from loving what I do. Love gives people a lot of power, and I think it's more important here than it is anywhere else. If we weren't brave enough to love, then what else would we have? Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy our content and would like to help the channel, watch our SCP podcast Redacted, buy gear from our merch store, or join our group of Patreon backers shown here. This select bunch are our highest donors this week. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there.